Hey, I'm Pete with Moscow Moto, and in today's video, I want to talk about separate body armor for adventure touring. I'm at home in my shop right now. I'm packing my bags and getting ready to head down to Patagonia. I'll be traveling there for about a month on a GS850, and um, I want to show you how I've adopted separate body armor for my touring kit. So a lot of you might be familiar with separate body armor already from dirt biking, um, but if you're not, the principle is that instead of having your armor built into a jacket, you wear a separate armor kit, and then you put a jacket over the top. So we've kind of adapted that concept for adventure touring, and that underlying theme is um, built into basically all of our apparel at Moscow Moto. So I'm just going to kind of walk through the layers um, that I'm taking with me on this trip, and you'll see um, how I've set it up to accommodate everything from kind of warm temperatures at the one end, maybe in the high 80s, low 90s, all the way to cold and wet temperatures. I'm expecting definitely rain and definitely temperatures in the kind of 40 to 45 and maybe even lower when I get up into some mountain passes um, and some high altitudes. So I'm just gonna start walking through the riding apparel I'm taking with me on this trip, and I'll explain each piece as I go. So the first thing is our Basilisk jacket. This is our kind of um, adventure touring kit. It's got really excellent abrasion resistance. There's super fabric in the shoulders, down the arms. It's got great venting. It's got storm flaps on the zippers. It's made from an extremely waterproof material. So this is my outer shell. Um, it doesn't have integrated armor in it. There's no inside liner. It's just a shell. It rolls up relatively tight on the back of the bike, not super compact like an emergency rain layer, but definitely a lot smaller than what you'd typically expect from an adventure jacket. And that's important because on the warmer days, I don't plan to be wearing it. Um, so this is a great jacket. It's got great venting. It's got adjustability to it. So that's my outer layer. And another great thing about this is that it's pretty chill as motorcycle jackets go fashion wise. So I'm pretty comfortable just wearing this around if it's really chilly out or I've got to walk through the rain to get somewhere. I'll use that as my outer jacket. Um, the next layer is the, our ectotherm heated jacket. The ectotherm is really cool. So this is actually the only insulating layer I'm taking on this trip, both for on bike and off bike use. So the ectotherm plugs into my bike, gets really warm when I'm riding, but then off the bike, it's also got awesome insulation in it. And it's a pretty cool jacket. It's really comfortable to wear. Like in my tent on a cold night, I'll wear it in my sleeping bag and sleep in it. It also makes a great pillow in my tent on the other nights. And then um, I'll also wear it out to like a restaurant or if I'm walking around town on a chilly night, but then I get on the bike and when I get up into some of those high altitudes or on the long, cold, rainy days, I plug it into the battery and man, it just heats right up. It's so warm, I almost can't take it on the highest setting. Um, I'll typically wear this on a cold day underneath my armor, but on a warmer day, I'll put it over the armor. It definitely heats more under the armor, but some days that's not necessary and putting it over the armor makes it a little bit more convenient to take on and off. So that's my uh, insulating layer. Then uh, I'm taking our workhorse jersey. So for the days when I'm not wearing the Basilisk jacket, I'll be riding just with this jersey over armor. The nice thing about the workhorse is that it has some abrasion resistance built into it. Now, when I say abrasion resistance on the jersey, I'm not talking about um, pavement slides. I'm thinking more about like high-speed gravel, dirt slides. Um, so you're gonna have a little bit more abrasion protection, maybe a little less road rash, and hopefully not destroy the jersey if you go down with some speed. That's one of the great things about this. And it's a, it's a heavier, denser material, so it blocks a little more wind than our summer weight jerseys, which makes it great for higher speeds and cooler temperatures like what I expect to encounter down in Chile. Um, so next up, I'll show you the armor I'm taking on this kit, on this trip. So the armor uh, kit I'm taking is the Liat Airflex. So this is actually um, a really minimalist armor solution. This is a CE1 kit, so it's not the highest level of impact protection. It's rated for moto, but just not at the highest level. It's got a chest piece and then a back piece, and um, the chest piece, uh, the armor pieces inside have nice big air holes in them, so there's a lot of ventilation, and it's really, really thin and minimal and just kind of hugs up next to your body, which is important for me on a long trip because um, a lot of times I'm jumping off the bike, walking around, talking to people, exploring, and I don't necessarily want to have like a big bulky armor kit. So this is a kind of armor kit you can put on and just forget it's there, which I love. But it does come a little bit um, with a sacrifice in terms of protection. But for me on this trip, that's worth it. Um, the next layer I have is our Strata base layer. So this is a Merino brace. It's actually new yarn. So it's part Merino, part nylon. Um, it's a base, um, actually a mid layer, I'll call it, not a base layer because it typically goes over my base layer. And it, but it's basically long underwear. Um, and the great thing about this is that not only does it work as a long underwear kit, but it's also a cool hoodie. So, you know, if I can go into pretty much any like restaurant or hotel or whatever, if I have a really ratty base layer on, pull this over the top or wear it casually when I'm off the bike. Um, but when I'm on the bike, I snap the hood off. The hood is removable and um, stash that in my bags. And then I wear this as my long underwear. It's also got a great like kangaroo pocket here. So it's just a really cozy hoodie, even to sleep in. I wear it like pajamas. Um, and uh, I'll wear it around town and stuff like that too. So it's a dual purpose um, piece of my kit. 
Then the next thing I have is our graph base layer. The graph is an awesome base layer. It's really versatile. So I use it on adventure bikes. I use it trail riding. Um, it's super light. It's just as light and ventilated as we could possibly make it. This is your next to skin layer. So um, on a hot day, this is the only thing I'll have next to skin on a, on a cooler day. I'll layer up with the ectotherm and the strata and stuff like that. Um, but the great thing about the graph is because it's so thin and light that I can wash it in a hotel sink and it's dry by morning. So I only have to bring one of these. I don't actually need to bring two. I used to bring two. Now I just bring one because I can pretty much count on washing this in a hotel sink. I'll just take a bar of soap, put it in the sink, run some warm water, work it around, wash it out, hang it up to dry. And by morning it's dry. So, um, you know, every kind of four or five days I'll do a wash on one of these. And, um, uh, it's just a really comfortable, really basic, reliable, uh, base layer. Okay. So on my bottom half, I'm taking the basilisk pants. So this is the bottom half of the basilisk jacket that I showed you before. This is a really cool pant. Um, it's got double layer material in the butt, which is great for abrasion protection. And then also helps with waterproofing and preventing the kind of soggy butt phenomenon. It's got really nice venting in the thighs and the knees and then exhaust vents on the back, great pockets for touring and then abrasion in the knees, leather on the inside. It's just a very comfortable pant. I've got, um, it has traditional belt loops on it which is a really nice feature for touring because it feels more like a regular pant instead of the kind of um, technical waist adjusters you see on a lot of like uh, moto pants and mountain biking shorts and stuff like that. This has traditional belt loops. So it feels more like a normal pant. I'll be wearing these every day on the bike. Um, so this is going to get a lot of use on the trip. And so it's important that they be very comfortable and that they fit well. So uh, underneath the basilisk pant, I have our strata bottoms. And the cool thing about the Strata, so this is a three quarter length long underwear bottom. Again, new yarn, so it's got the uh, strength of nylon, but then it's got the anti-stink and warm when wet features of wool. Um, it's a three quarter length, so it sits above your boot. And then there's zips down the side. It's a full length zip. So um, in the morning, if I wake up, say I slept in these, I get up, I put my moto pants on, it's cold out for the first couple hours of riding. But then around 10, 11 a.m., it starts to warm up. Instead of having to take my pants all the way off to take my long underwear off, I can leave my boots on, leave my outer, outer pants on, slide the pants down, unzip these, pull them out, pull my pants back up, stuff these in a bag and keep going. So it's just a lot easier to put them on and off than it is with a traditional long underwear layer. That's what I love about those. And like I said, they're also really great to sleep in. And then um, for my final base layer on the bottom, I'm taking my moto skivvies. So the moto skivvies are a moto specific chamois. There's a chamois here in the bottom and I just think they're really comfortable. And for me, they work great on adventure bikes and like touring seats. Um, sometimes on a small bike, like on my trail bike, I'll wear a mountain biking short instead of the moto skivvies, although they also work on that. But I find for like an adventure touring bike, this is just the most comfortable short I've found. So this is actually a Revit adventure glove. It's got a waterproof breathable membrane in it. And um, these I use on the highway or on pavement or long stretches or when it's raining but I find for off-road use, they're a bit bulky and it's hard to really operate the controls efficiently. And so I always bring a pair of dirt bike gloves too. These are the hand up gloves. And the nice thing about these is the entire palm and all the fingers are touchscreen compatible. So it's really easy to operate my phone even through the Navigator cell phone case. And that's important because I use my phone as my sole source of navigation on trips like this. So I take two sets of gloves, one for touring, one for the dirt. And then for armor, uh, I've got uh, slip on knee pads and then slip on elbow pads. And the pads I'm using on this trip are actually prototypes of our own Moscow Moto armor. So these aren't available yet, um, but they're very comfortable, flexible, lots of ventilation, um, super easy to wear all day, but you can use pretty much any slip on elbow or knee pad for protection. So that's my riding kit for this trip. And actually um, this is about the same kit I use even on my 500, even on shorter trips, longer trips, although I might opt for a different jacket. I might go for the rack or some emergency rain layer, but this same basic concept of layering um, works for me on pretty much every trip, no matter how long it is, no matter what the bike, no matter how technical the terrain. So that's a pretty good approximation of how separate body armor works for adventure touring and dual sport. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to try and field them for you. We have a lot of experience matching different kits to different riding styles, different terrain, different bikes, and we're happy to share that knowledge with you if it helps. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.